Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause, and today I'm going to talk about how having a leaky gut can cause hair loss. So about five years ago, I started to notice a connection between stress, poor food choices, and some nutrient deficiencies in my ladies that were missing patches of hair. And I started to think, okay, something's up here, and and what are we going to do about this? Because a lot of these ladies that were noticing that uh, they had B12 deficiencies, they had iron deficiencies, they were stressed out, and most of the time they're thinking it's just the stress, and so they're taking a hair, skin, and nail supplement, but they're not getting the results that they're looking for in terms of hair growth. And in fact, these patches end up being more defined and more coming more frequently and they're losing more hair and their hair is thinning and what the heck is going on well i can't help but notice that there's a strong connection between gut inflammation leaky gut and hair loss and in particular what i've found in my practice is that to promote hair growth you've got to work on stress management but you've also got to work to de-inflame that gut lining you've got to give some anti inflammatories so natural anti-inflammatories to that gut being antioxidants you've got to be able to digest your food better because when we're stressed we don't break down our food like we should we're not allowing ourselves to absorb iron and b12 and all the different nutrients that are absolutely key for hair growth and in particular proteins A lot of females in my practice who are stressed out, oftentimes, if I run their labs, they they look nutrient deficient. They look like they're muscle wasting. And that means they're not absorbing proteins at all. And we need proteins to be able to grow hair. We also need good fats as well. And so I'm noticing that we've got to help folks digest their food better when they're stressed so that they're not missing out on the key nutrients to get their hair growing. So that's a biggie. Another biggie is eating the right foods to promote hair growth. We need a diet rich in folate, not synthetic folic acid, but folate. Also rich in iron, rich in seaweeds. So some iodine or at least a little salt with iodine in it because we've got to get those nutrients there. Avocado, oranges, olives, carrots, cabbage, red fruit and veggies. These are all also key things for getting hair to grow. And the reason being is because they either have high amounts of antioxidants, vitamins A and C being also antioxidants for the body, or lycopene. That's what's in red fruit and veggies. That is a huge antioxidant and helper to promote hair growth. Sulfur, oddly enough, helps to promote hair growth. And so the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts family is huge for getting your hair to grow. Another biggie is getting in the right minerals, such as selenium such as magnesium. These are critical for hair growth. Of course, we're all kind of familiar perhaps with biotin and B vitamins. So biotin in particular being the most marketed vitamin out there for hair growth and skin and nail. I think nail and uh, hair growth in particular, biotin is very famous for that. But unfortunately, a lot of people are taking a ton of this and they're not digesting it well, they're not getting it across the bloodstream, or if they are getting it across the bloodstream, the inflammation in the gut is blocking anything from happening. The other big component here is that these folks might also, who are not having proper hair growth, might also not be getting enough support in terms of stress management because stress creates a lot of cortisol floating around. So the hormone cortisol floats around in the body and it separates the digestive system lining. And no matter how stressed you are and for how long you've been stressed, your gut lining is going to have holes in it. You're going to need to plug up those holes because if you're stressed, cortisol absolutely opens up those cells. And now we've got all these molecules of food getting across in the bloodstream that shouldn't be there. And I have a theory that they lodge in the scalp, cause an inflammatory reaction. So they cause our body to go on attack. So the body attacks these food molecules or 
toxins or viruses or whatever that get across into the bloodstream, the body attacks them, and guess what happens? We end up with a autoimmune reaction, so our body attacking our own cells of our follicles, so our follicles of our hair. So most of the time when you've been losing hair and you're losing it to the point where you're getting patches, this is an autoimmune reaction, and it starts in your gut. And so today I'm going to talk to you how to work on de-inflaming the digestive system lining so that you can stop that autoimmune reaction and be able to absorb your nutrients that you need to help to grow healthy hair. All right, so let's jump into it. Number one thing here is de-inflaming the gut. You want to absolutely get rid of the junk food. If it's not closest to nature, it needs to be out of your life because the artificial sweeteners, the artificial dyes, red number five, yellow number this, that's junk. Anything that you can't pronounce the name of it is junk on an ingredient list. You want it out of there. The other big thing here is synthetic folic acid. Some of us can't process synthetic folic acid. Any food list or ingredient list of a food that says enriched flour, that is synthetic folic acid has been added. Synthetic folic acid is obviously the main ingredient in the prenatal vitamins too. And I highly recommend switching to folate and it'll say methylfolate or quattrofolate. You just want it to say folate versus folic acid in any of your supplements because you don't know if you have the mutation not allowing you to process synthetic folic acid. About 50% of the population has this mutation called MTHFR. Now it sounds like a dirty word, but it's really a mutation to an enzyme which doesn't allow you to process folic acid. You can't process folic acid, your body becomes toxic. You don't process B12 well, you can have mood issues, you can have fatigue issues, a host of issues, miscarriages, things of that nature. If you want more information on MTHFR, go to mthfr.net. A fellow classmate of mine from Bastyr named Ben Lynch created this website and has done a ton of research. Great stuff out there. Go check it out. He's got a lot of information if you suspect you might have that mutation. Now, that all being said, the other big thing here is, is getting rid of some foods that we suspect are healthy for us, but can actually block our ability to absorb nutrients, and in particular, critical nutrients such as iron, iodine, selenium, magnesium, B12, biotin, critical nutrients for helping us to grow our hair. These are beans, grains, dairy, coffee, chocolate, nightshades, and nuts. Now you might be thinking, oh my God, what am I going to eat? There's plenty of other things out there. Don't panic. One of the big things here is that beans, grains, coffee, chocolate, and nuts all have something called lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S. These are molecules that plants have naturally to protect them from prey. Well, we're going to eat them. And so they're kind of trying to protect themselves from us. And so in this case, this is a problem. Why? Because grains, beans, nuts, we, those are kind of the seeds, right, of, of these plants so that the plants can go and reproduce. And if we eat them, we're ultimately what the plant hopes is that we go poop out those seeds in the same form somewhere else, but they're an irritant to us. And we, we want the nutrients from those beans, those grains, and, and the nuts. And in this case, we need to be able to reduce those lectins so that you can digest these foods better. The way to do it is to sprout the grains, the beans, or the nuts. And another way is to pressure cook. You can pressure cook the grains or beans. I haven't pressure cooked nuts. You can try it. I don't know. Let me know how it goes. But anyway, the, the big thing here is the pressure cooking and sprouting reduces the lectins and allows us to be able to digest those foods better. Because a lot of us get on healthy kicks and then we notice that, okay, I'm not feeling any better and my hair doesn't look any better. Well, oftentimes it's because those things, those lectins are going to be blocking you from being able to absorb your nutrients that you need because they're irritating your gut. So big key here is to really consider maybe one month of just ditching all of the beans, grains, um, nuts, and, and see how you do. Also, the other biggie is, is getting out dairy and nightshades because those are also big, big irritants as well. And it's, it's an autoimmune paleo kind of plan. And what it's doing is de-inflaming your body so that you can reset the gut lining. 
Then after that month, now that's when you want to bring in the sprouted grains, beans, nuts, or pressure cook the grains and beans and see how you do. And I highly recommend doing that as one way to de-inflame the gut and remove that as a factor as to why your hair is not growing. The next big thing is that you want to get into working on your phenols. So these are your plant antioxidants. Green tea extract, mulberry leaf extract, apple pectin, picogenol. This is a antioxidant from pine nuts. That's an extract there. Now, all of these things are great for helping you to de-inflame the gut. You could do all of these individually or you could take a supplement to help with it. I like Thorn brand polyresveratrol. It has resveratrol, the antioxidant that's known for being in wine, but in this case, you don't have to drink like 32 bottles of it. It's all packaged in a nice little capsule for you. So something to to take into account here. That being said, the phenols are great antioxidants that love to feed your good bacteria. And we do need our good bacteria for helping to de-inflame our digestive system and helping us to absorb nutrients. I highly, highly recommend getting in at least 5 billion organisms a day of a beneficial bacteria. I have a brand called Good Bugs. There are a bunch of different products out there. Jero is another great brand. Look up those guys and start getting your probiotics in and take them when you take your antioxidants. The next thing is digestive enzymes. If you have acid reflux, if you have any heartburn at all, you probably don't want a digestive enzyme with hydrochloric acid in it, but you can get them on their own without the hydrochloric acid, but Hydrochloric acid is often deficient in folks who are stressed. We use hydrochloric acid naturally to help to break down our food and help us to get the nutrients that we need from our food. I highly recommend if you don't have acid reflux to consider a digestive enzyme that has hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is going to be coming from beets. Don't panic. It's not this big acid that's going to burn your your esophagus or anything. Um burn through your tissue. It's, it's not like that. It's there to help you to break down your foods. Don't be afraid of it. It's an absolutely safe item. You just don't want to be taking, you know, just hydrochloric acid pills and a whole bunch of them without supervision. But in a supplement formula where you have digestive enzymes, such as lipase, amylase, protease, those kind of things, which are, are mimicking your pancreatic enzymes, you're safe to have a little bit of hydrochloric acid. There's going to be around 400 or so, 200, 400 milligrams or so of hydrochloric acid in there. That's okay. You need that. It's like a little boost to help you to break down your food. I highly recommend it so that you can get the minerals in. The other way to go about this is to make sure you're chewing your food too. 25 times per bite, no matter what, break down your food. Their teeth are there for a reason. Use them. All right, another big thing to keep in mind here for growing hair is that you want to get in some greens. So dark leafy greens, the kale, chard, arugula, those kind of things, spinach, three handfuls a day. Now, I also recommend considering this, maybe two handfuls of the greens and one handful of a seaweed. And when I say handful, that means at least a one cup serving of seaweed. Because seaweed has iodine, it has good folate, it has nutrients to help you to grow your hair. It also is rich in vitamins A, D, E, and K, the fat-soluble vitamins. And so highly, highly recommend getting in some seaweeds. And I have that in my resource page for helping you grow your hair at drjkrausnd.com. It's a free resource. Go check it out. It'll outline everything I'm talking about here so you don't have to feverishly take notes. Another big thing with folks who are losing hair is that stress is a key component. And one of the best ways to work with stress is, of course, having fun every single day and and making your life more enjoyable. And I talk about that a lot in my podcast, and there are resources on my resource page. Check those out. There's the best day ever resource that I highly recommend for helping with stress management. Holy basil is another herb. It's also known as Tulsi. Huge, huge helper in terms of calming down the nervous system. There's not a lot of interactions with this herb compared to ashwagandha, which is a nightshade, and that could cause all kinds of trouble for people. So I highly recommend holy basil during the day and perhaps combining holy basil with some passion flower at night to help you to relax. If you are having trouble sleeping and your hair is not growing, 
you definitely need to get on figuring out how to get proper sleep. In terms of helping you to sleep, if you're having trouble falling asleep, L-theanine, it's an extract of green tea, 200 milligrams before bed can help. Sometimes you might need up to 1,000, that's okay. But consider using this to help you to sleep. Melatonin's another thing. There's a lot of different products up there that can help you. I have something called Well Rested. It's a combination of L-theanine and um, melatonin and some herbs that help you to, to sleep better. And I highly, highly recommend considering something, get some support for sleep, even if you go the basic with holy basil and passion flower, something of that nature. Holy basil and passion flower, you would just combine one bag of each of the teas. Or if you're going to make a loose leaf tea, head over to mountainroseherbals.com. It's a great resource for organic, high quality herbal teas, um, in particular herbal loose leaves, so that you can make your own teas. If you're going to make your own tea, then you want half a tablespoon of holy basil and a half a tablespoon of passion flower to make one cup of tea. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, if you're just doing holy basil on its own, it's one tablespoon per cup of water. All right, so the other big thing here is you've got to plug up those leaks on the gut. Seaweed can help you with that. Microalgae, such as spirulina or Klamath Falls microalgae. So that's from Klamath Falls, Oregon. Those can help you with linking your gut lining cells back together. If you are not opposed to having an animal source in your body, vital proteins, collagen peptides are huge. They're important to help you to link your cells together. And I highly recommend doing this for about three months to help to get that going because those collagen proteins, they link your gut back together. Now you're not going to get all these molecules coming across into your bloodstream that you could have an immune reaction to. Because ultimately here, having hair loss oftentimes is an autoimmune, so body, your body is attacking itself type of reaction. The other big, huge, huge thing that I can't stress enough is getting rid of all of the synthetic ingredients in your diet, artificial sweeteners. If you're using them like Sweet and Low, Splenda, any of that stuff, stop it right now. Get it out of your diet. It's horrible stuff. It is a chemical. If you're addicted to diet soda, just get it out of your world. If you're addicted to soda in general, get it out of your world. This is, these are just not good for your gut lining especially because we've got who knows what on the lining of those cans might be BPA, which is a hormone disruptor. It messes with your gut lining. And then you might also have artificial sweeteners in there. That stuff is irritating. It's like eroding your gut every time you drink it. Ugh, get it out, get it out. Hydrogenated oils. These are oils that your body doesn't even know what to do with. Partially hydrogenated oils, fully hydrogenated oils. They're in junk food. They're in margarine. If you're still eating margarine, seriously, go over to your fridge and throw it out right now. I'm not kidding. Margarine is junk. It was a fabricated health idea in the 80s that failed really bad. Go get some grass-fed butter. Go get some ghee. Kerrygold, amazing brand for butter. Organic Valley, good butter brands. Go get those and ditch your freaking margarine. Ugh, gross stuff, not cool for the body. If you can't pronounce some of the ingredients in your foods, you just look at the back of the label on something that's packaged. If you can't pronounce it, it should not be in your body because chances are, if you can't pronounce it, chances are your gut lining doesn't know what to do with it either. It's going to just be sitting there irritating you. So highly recommend to eat closest to nature, consider on all levels getting out the beans, the grains, the dairy. Our bodies do not know what to do with dairy other than butter. Now, this is probably a caveat because you're going, well, you said no dairy. Butter is a different source. It's rich in butyrate. It's also been, it, it does not have all of the lactose and the different components that irritate the gut lining. Lactose is ridiculous for irritation and a lot of us do not have lactase the enzyme to be able to break down lactose so that's that component of lactose intolerant but lactose intolerant is really like hey you shouldn't be drinking or consuming dairy hello so get that out of your diet now so dairy out coffee i know a lot of people are probably grumbling and the thing about chocolate when i had mentioned that it's because they're beans they're no different than kidney beans black beans they're all the same they have high lectins Either work on sprouting your grains, beans, and nuts to get rid of those lectins or pressure cooking your grains or beans and avoiding coffee and chocolate. At least until your hair starts to grow by like three months, 
and then maybe start adding things in slowly, but do not go back to the levels of coffee or chocolate that you were eating before. I highly, highly recommend not doing that. All right, so that has been my protocol and spiel on how to get your hair to regrow again. I have a resource on my resource page, drjkrausnd.com forward slash resources. Go over there, get your free resource. It'll help you. It'll give you an outline of everything I talked about today. I also have my other notes in terms of resources that I provided throughout this podcast in my show notes. So check those out as well. So Ben Lynch with MTHFR, Mountain Rose Herbals, Organifi as a greens source. And then of course my products are on my website. If you're looking for some probiotics, greens powder, or digestive enzymes, you can check them out as well. I hope that you have learned a little bit on how to get that hair regrowing. And I would love to hear what you think of this episode and what you tried and how you did. I'm here to help. You can also post in my private Facebook group if you have any questions or just want to know more. All right. I have enjoyed going through this episode with you. I hope you have as well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So... I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, Click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.